Hey, welcome to part two of our PowerPoint makeover. We're going to uh, come back to this original slide that I kind of put off in part one. Now, when we started talking about visuals, visuals are any, I really encourage using visuals over text, but sometimes we need to text and we like to still have a visual or the eye candy. Well, at the very least, what I would have done with this slide, if you want to maintain the traditional PowerPoint template, which again, I'm, nothing wrong with that, uh, one thing I may want to do here is I'm just going to go ahead and just drop this image down here. And then I'm going to duplicate this slide. I'm all about making things easy. And in fact, you may think because I'm doing more here, I'm actually making it complicated, but actually I'm doing things that look nice. Oops, I'm going to actually reverse this because I actually deleted the first three bullet points. And now I want to go ahead and get rid of the last three bullet points. So all I'm doing here is just kind of cleaning this up. It's just breaking the bullet points up. Um, again, you're better off, even though maybe all six of these bullet points are related to dynamic scene, you may be better off to actually break it up so you don't clutter. And then the image down here, I just made smaller. So it's just kind of more of eye candy. And you know, it's just kind of that branding for the presentation. Here's another example from our before. And I replaced the photos with something that's very similar. But like the original photo, there was two photos in here lined up like this, and I kind of felt that they really kind of conflicted with each other. In fact, there's a lot of stuff going up here. You have the photos to the left, and we're trying to you know, cram in some text to the right, and it was just too much, and really what should I focus on? And the fact of the matter is, I shouldn't say these conflict with each other, but they're basically showing the same thing. And so, and if each image here is important to the presenter, then they should either be a single focus on the slide or have their own slide. So what I did was, is, is kind of broke it up a little bit so it's gonna be a little more visually appealing to our audience. And again, you, you notice in, in this, in part one and part two, I'm all about sometimes simplicity on a slide and that yes, simplicity also means adding slides. So uh, it seems kind of an oxymoron. I wanna simplify my presentation, I'm gonna add slides and that's something that's hard for people to wrap their, their, uh, their mind around. So here is uh, a replacement a slide or a redone slide. And I have a medical treatment in a large font. And by the way, I failed to talk about this in um, part one. But the gold in this, I didn't just eyeball this gold. I actually grabbed the gold from the bar up here in Photoshop using the RGB attributes. So if I right click, if I select this text, come up here to the text, and here's the goal, because once I apply it, it's gonna be my recent colors. If I go to more colors, in Photoshop, you can, with the eye picker, the color picker, excuse me, you can come in here, grab the actual RGB colors, and apply them in there. So, very easy to do that, and so I'm actually gonna brand or colorize my text based off an image that I'm using. So that's how I did that. And by the way, this font has a white outline and I failed to mention that as well, uh, verbally in the first tutorial. Okay, so here's our image. And by the way, the image here, uh, I'm in PowerPoint 2010. Uh, I was experimenting with this and I ended up putting a beveled edge around it just to kind of make it look a little bit different. So, and then each of those bullet points got their own slide using the technique we talked about in part one where I just broke them up. Here's another example, and this really isn't a bad slide by any means, but I want it to stay consistent. Once you kind of, if you break outside the mold and you're gonna use this, try to stay consistent and not go back to your traditional, you're kind of mixing things here, which isn't always great visually. So I just went in here and did this. So in fact, there's not a lot of difference between this and this other than just the graphs, graphics and the text and the layout. Here is um, an image. Again, I changed out the photos from the original with some generic stuff that I found. Uh, a lot of stuff going on, and yeah, there's a little animation of these coming in, but really they just, you know, this comes in as soon as the slide comes up and this follows. Really lots of information here, and this is really a, a significant element of his presentation. And in fact, this was not changed at all other than the photos. And what I did was is, is kind of broke them up into multiple slides, actually two slides. And we really kind of made the, the text up here 
uh, really dynamic using one of the photos. And then the, he had other, three other points that we just kind of pulled into the last one. Trust your, into two things. In fact, I could actually add animation. So I could do, um, let's go to animation. Let's go animation pane. In fact, I do have it animated here. So this will come up first, this will come up second and stay on screen. So very easy to do. But again, you see the difference of the before and the after. Just much, nice, uh, much nicer, very clean. Um, and as we come to our conclusion of our part two, uh, it seems we might as well start off with our uh, ending slide. And as I said earlier, your title slide and your final slide can actually have a lot more uh, airtime than your other slides within your presentation. And I know in this case, he had a lot of questions following his presentation. So this slide was up for quite a bit. In fact, uh, I don't think we're quite done with it, but uh, this is what I did for right now. But my thought is we're probably going to put something else up there, maybe the squad again, or something that just kind of brands it uh, for the organization, because this is going to get a lot of eye time as he discusses and takes questions from the audience. Well, that's about all the time we have. Uh, really, I think, you know, we just showed you a sampling of some of the slides in this, this makeover. And what I'd like to ask of you, if you have a PowerPoint presentation you think needs a makeover, send it our way. Even if it isn't yours, you know, we'll go ahead and change some of the content just to protect the innocent. But, you know, what we like to do is use your example uh, in a makeover so we can share with others and so we all can learn from it. Well, until the next time, I hope you always find unique ways to make your presentation more editable. Take care.